uh, in one sort of go. Okay. So this room's quite warm. So I'm just going to speed dry this very quickly. So let me recap for you. Okay. Started with the sky. Um, but the sky brushwork was already directional. It wasn't just a going back and forth, you know, a horizontal pass, horizontal. It wasn't a flat horizontal uh, brush job. It was directional brush, uh, brush marks. And then once we got the blue, uh, uh, ultramarine blue in um, brush marks, uh, we then started to um, lift out, if you remember, or oh, sorry, while the um, blue was still wet, we went into the lower part of the sky with some raw sienna. So when that was on, then we started uh, the uh, lifting out. So, um, you know, going into the water tub, cleaning the paint out, squeezing nearly all of the water out of that brush and lifting the striations out, okay, like this. Uh, then what did we do then? We went into the sea down here and uh, with the ultramarine blue mostly, we, we hinted upon some sand with some raw sienna around here. We were careful to leave out a little bit of light for the top of the pier because that would be reflected surface. Um, then we came down the beach with a much weaker, so it was the same color paint on the beach, but this had a lot more water in it. OK, um, we thought, well, let's just uh, put something over here. And we were very directional again with the brush. So direction of brush work, direction of brush strokes is so important in these situations. And, um, you know, really, you've really got to be mindful of that all the time. Um, just to bring your attention to some detail for a moment, I'm trying to explain, you know, as much as I can. Um, Notice there's a little jetty, a little uh, launch jetty where they take their boats down, just where my finger is here in the photo. Um, that can be put in afterwards. I wouldn't draw that in. I wouldn't feel the necessity to um, put pencil lines. I mean, you can if you want. Um, I suppose if you did do it, OK, if you, if you were to draw that in, it might help you not forget it, because I am as guilty as anybody in that respect. I. Uh, I sometimes sort of finish my painting and think, well, maybe if I'd have just drawn it in there, um, uh, you know, I wouldn't have forgotten to have put it in. Um, the reason why I sometimes do that is because I'm always wanting to keep my sketches as simple as possible. You know, this is not a drawing lesson. This is a, a loose style watercolor painting lesson. So it's important that um, I try to convey um, uh, the pencil drawing sketches, we should call them, sorry, there's a difference between sketches and drawings. Our sketches that we intend painting on must be kept as simple as possible, okay? Um, just the bare basics of information. Um, because if you, the more you draw, the more it starts looking like a drawing. The more pencil work you do, the more it starts looking like a drawing. And you'll get embroiled in it. You'll get fall into the trap of turning it into a drawing rather than a sketch. And what that does is fatal for the painting because your brain, unless you stop, if you do your pencil drawing and it's got a bit busy, I suggest you literally take a proper break, um, maybe as long as 20 minutes, half an hour, because you must get out of that tight drawing head before you start painting. I've seen it happen. Well, in my own work, in, in, you know, in the early days, I was always doing that um, until I'd learned the importance of keeping your sketches to an absolute basic. Um, so um, let's move on. Um, I think I'm going to paint most of this, not all of it, but most of this, 90% of this painting with, with the one inch flat brush. Um, so let's make a start on the landmass. Now, if I study the landmass, and I, and I again, I, I, I'm going to warn you about um, uh, 
colors. Okay, if you look at the photo and bear in mind the um, effects of one computer screen to another, one camera to another, um, colors are not going to be probably what I saw on the day anyway. So, um, but what I have to go on something, there has to be a benchmark. So what I'm looking at in here is some dark greens. There's a lot of dark greens, some slightly lighter greens. Um, when we move beyond my finger point, so, so from here down, it's mostly a dark green um, uh, color, okay? That, that, that area there is mostly dark green. But from my index finger here into the buildings and town over here, you can see a definite cooling off. Equally as dark, the tonal value is the same, okay? But it goes to a sort of bluey purple gray, okay? That's really important to note. Um, and again, when you're out walking, you, you, you're down at the coast, in the city, wherever you are, um, you could be painting in your head. I, I always like to do, I always think, you know, even if you're not sat at your easel with a brush in your hand, you're always painting. Um, you can observe these things when you're going about your everyday life. Um, unless you're driving a car, and I don't, I don't recommend you do that. But um, so, so be painting all the time, you know, always be painting in your head. Right. Um, so I'm not going to start here. I'm going to start with the cooler colors. And although I've put colors like cobalt in my list, I do have that caveat, um, which I must start putting on the actual packs themselves sometimes. Um, I don't always use all of those colors. They're there for standby sometimes. Um, so I'm starting, I, so I will use a bit of cerulean blue here. Let me just show you it's a bit of ultramarine blue, a bit of cerulean blue. Cerulean, ultramarine quite strong, given that, you know, what I'm mixing here is for that stretch there, approximately, from there to there. I will drag it where, I will be dragging it this way a little bit. So I'd rather make more than, than too much than not enough, okay? And you can see now why you have to put fresh paint out each time. There's no way you will get this volume of paint off a dried out piece of paint that's sitting in a well, okay? Another good reason for having to, you know, why we use tube paints and not pan paints. Pan paints are for sketching quick. Um, I shouldn't, well, I shouldn't say sketching alone. Um, they're useful for illustration, small brushwork. They're no good, uh, it's gotta be tubes for this type of uh, loose style painting. Now then, so there it is. There's a blue, obviously, okay, between those two blues. Um, as I say, it's got a slight purple to it. So I'm going to take a little bit of alizarin crimson. Be really careful with the alizarin crimson. Um, that's about the only color that you probably could get away with if it was slightly dried out, because you almost want almost nothing of it. So it just gives it a slight purpley color. Um, now that's going to be my starting color. Once this color is on in place, um, you'll see me add a little bit of warmth because for every area of cool, there must be a smaller amount of warmth. For every area of warmer colors, there must be a smaller amount of cool, okay? It's all about juxtaposition, the 70-30 ratio. Um, by the way, folks, um, I'm going to sort of plug this book I'm, I'm working on at the moment. Thanks to all of you, those of you that um, have responded. I really appreciate that. Um, but these are the sort of issues that I will be talking about in the book. 70-30 ratio, how important it is in everything we do. So as I say, um, I just put a tiny bit of burnt sienna in there then. Let's make a start. So steady hand, um, if, if you're a little bit shaky, like I am sometimes certain days, I think all you've got to do is rest your hand here, like that, rest that fleshy part of your hand there. Position the brush where you want to make the mark before you actually make contact, okay? And um, the top of this area is just, don't overcomplicate it, do it sort of quickly like this. It won't be a carbon copy probably of, um, of what's in the photo, but it's going to be close enough 
for identification. People should know that this is Tenby, okay, by the end of it. So notice I am also, I'm not going to do, there's a little, um, what, what I'm doing there with the corner of the brush is actually the lifeboat station. And in front of the lifeboat station, there is a lifeboat launch area, you know, the, um, the jetty thing. Well, what I tend to do for things like that is I'll take um, sometimes even a pencil. If you've got enough paint here, that, as I have, you've left a sort of bead, I'll take a pencil and I'll take that paint down off that amount of paint that I've already got there. Now, you might want to come back to that later anyway to make it a little bit stronger. So don't press so hard that the pencil is making a mark. All you're doing is dragging paint, okay? And you can make some other inferences around there like that. You could, of course, use, um, if you've got a, I was looking for mine then, if you've got a brush handle that's got a good point to it, this one's a bit stubby. And if you've got a brush point or you've got a stick, piece of stick, um, really useful for doing those sort of things. So sticking to the job in hand here, I will be leaving out little pockets of light, like, like here, okay? Because we know that there are roofs of buildings in there. Um, a little bit regimental, my, my um, lights there. But remember what we said about the top of this jetty? It's, it's above what I'm doing now because that's a hard surface and that jetty will uh, have uh, light on top of it like that. Coming into here, breaking, breaking up this um, this skyline. I think I'm going to sort of stop. We'll come up this side building. I, I, it's not important exactly what that looks like. There's a a roof up there. Sorry, a skyline up there. Something like that. Now then, nice little tiny little glimmers of light where the shadowed in the shadows, some of the roofs are picking up, catching the light that's coming over. Something like this. That should, that should suffice, I think. Um, okay, so now mentioned a little bit of warmth in here. I'm going to pick up a little bit of uh, raw sienna on the brush. I haven't bothered cleaning the brush. Picking up a little bit of raw sienna, and I'll say, I think, studying my photo, I think there's a bit of warmth around there. Just a hint. In all that cool shadow, there's just a hint of raw sienna in places. Okay, and that stops things from looking flat. I mean, you know, you've got to try and remember, though, that this is meant to be contrajure, it's silhouette, so you're not supposed to see much in the way of detail and colour. There's my little uh, building again, something like that. If I'm not careful, I'll warm this up too much. And it's not going to, if I warm it up too much, it's not going to look like it's further away from this area here. And that's what, that's why we use colour temperature, of course. Don't warm it up too much because it, this area will not look closer if you do. Okay, right. So let's move back into this mass area. And let's do the most important bit first. So I'm mixing up another. I think I will use a little bit of cobalt. I like to use a bit of cobalt in um, blues that are closer to us in proximity in the scene, okay? Before I do, actually, I've just noticed something. Um, I have to clean my brush there a second. I think the jetty should be warmed up because, after all, that jetty, picking up a bit of burnt sienna here, not raw sienna. Burnt sienna is a bit warmer again. Um, and I'm just seeing some warmth because it is closer, remember, okay? That jetty is coming towards us. A little bit of warmth in that jetty. There we are. I'm much happier with that. Uh, yeah, so back to this area here. See, you won't see it in the photograph, but I don't mind leaving some sort of suggestion of uh, gap, boundary, about there like that, okay? So it tells you what the land is doing when you do things like that, sloping down here. Uh, yeah, so back to the job in hand, ultramarine blue, uh, all my three blues. Why don't we just put all three blues in here? 
ultramarine blue, cerulean blue, cobalt blue, okay? Into that, a bit of burnt sienna. Now, I said it was green, okay? But you'll have to trust me on this one. This will have a green-ish look to it. And the reason for that is because in burnt sienna, there's a lot of yellow, believe it or not. You could add a bit of raw sienna, and that there's even more yellow in that. Um, so I'm going to show the edge with the blade of this brush, the dark edge that we can see in that um, in the photo, and that jetty is about there. Okay, and remember, if if you do this, if you go around some of this lower area with the darker shape, you're enhancing. Hang on, you're enhancing that, aren't you? Okay. So I've got a path. We'll leave some room for the path, which is about there somewhere like that. Doesn't have to be exact. And I'm going to continue. And I'm going to exaggerate the scale. That's something else that the photo doesn't do. At this point here in the bend of that path, there's not enough scale uh, jumping there. There's, there's, it just doesn't do it. Um, so I, I'm going to exaggerate that. Look at that. There's my, there's my width of path changing, opening up much wider than what's in the photo. Somebody very famous once said, um, a painting is a lie that tells the truth. And what it what was meant by that is quite simply um you have to do things in a painting uh so uh, uh, what is partly what is meant by this is that if if you if we only ever did what was in a in um in a photograph it wouldn't work in a painting Be, for, for whatever reason um it it, it wouldn't work um, so we have to do different things in our paintings to make it work and it's uh it's, it's a good one to remember that so i'll come back if i want to do anything else in this path which i probably will um i'll come back to it but i'm just making the basic shape again i keep saying um you know always thinking about this so what goes on up here this is where we can sort of say well let's make some greens here let's take some raw sienna uh, quite a lot of raw sienna, some, um, what's this called, ultramarine blue. And we'll get more of a sort of green, a sort of olivey green colour. And we'll take the brush work much bigger, much bolder, much faster, okay, into here like this. So, so see the tonal, it's unlike the photo. The photo is one big dark mass there. In my painting, this is a much paler, might be too pale for the moment, I'm not sure yet, but I'm picking up a, a bit of pure raw sienna here now and again, okay? Bit of pure raw sienna. What was I saying earlier about um, the 70-30 ratio? Um, I'm going to pick up a little bit of uh, cool, which is in this case cerulean blue, and that can go in here, places like this. Just, so if you were to sort of really study this area here, it is mostly a warm from the raw sienna, but there is some um, cool in there as well from the cerulean blue. The corners I never worry about. The corners are nothing. The corners often nothing. The corner over here is so far removed from the focal point. You don't want people over here. They don't, don't show them anything. Don't give them anything in this area here to distract them from here because that way you'll always guarantee especially with the strong movement that people view move around in a clockwise direction can't go any further this way um especially if you were to put something in the corner like you know you could put a there, there is a, a north beach in tenby interestingly enough um there is um i forget the rock there's a, a rock about here somewhere just out of shot of the photo is it called Church Rock or North Rock or something like that? Anyway, that, that could be useful um, about here to, to, to send your, your, your viewer back around. 
But the danger, of course, with that is if you do put it in and you make it too interesting, people will stop there. It's, I think you're better off just keeping it here and, and people come to here, they can't go any further, so they go back to the starting point. It's like a helter skelter. Keep going round, keep your view going round. And but they will always settle here because this is where the lion's share of the interest is, especially when I put dot in a couple of boats and things around here. So even though that's quite interesting, the path, it is only after all a, a movement design, okay, part of the movement. Um so let's uh let's move towards um a completion of this. Now I want to put something on my path. If you study the photo, the path seems to be, especially around here, the path seems to be more or less the same color as the sand. Okay. Now, what you've got to remember is this is still wet paint. Okay. So I can't do that. I cannot put, perhaps if I'd have thought about it at the time, you know, this is, this is just me thinking aloud. If I'd thought of it at the time, I could have drifted this um, pale, weak, raw sienna a bit further up and then I wouldn't have had to have done what I'm about to do but it's no biggie um incidentally what I'm doing here is I'm taking a bit of tissue and I'm just going to take a little bit of paint out of that it's a little bit strong yours might not be or it might not be strong enough so do you know always be weighing up your painting on its own merit it will not be the same as mine honestly trust me um, I certainly couldn't do it if I was sat where you are to, to, to get exactly the same as the tutor. It, it doesn't happen. And it, it's an important thing to know. Uh, an approximation is good. But the reason why it's important to know that it, you're not going to get exactly the same is for reasons like this. You make adjustment, adjustments as you're going along. Um, so I might have to make this adjustment, which I do and I'm doing. Um, but you might not have to because you either went um, stronger in the first place or weaker in the first place. Sometimes it's good just to take a, uh, a tissue and create some. Uh, if you think, well, this area is a bit too flat, um, despite my efforts to um, make it not look as, you know, as flat as the photo. Um, if it is still looking a little bit flat, then take a little bit of texture, create a little bit of texture with it with a tissue, only a little bit. Don't go mad. Again, you're not trying to drag your viewer down here. OK. OK, so still got this strong color. If I wanted to, I could go even darker to enhance uh, and to exacerbate, exaggerate, whatever you want to call it, um, the movement. So a little bit of dark in one or two places still. Look at that, a little bit of dark on the jetty really brought it towards us. A um, little bit of dark at that edge there. So I think I'm going to speed dry this so that I can do the path because we're not really far off the finishing touches here. Um, so is that dry? Yes, that's dried. Remember I said I might come back to this. So before I um, speed dry it completely, Perhaps I should speed dry it. Yeah, I'll just speed dry it, then I'll do this. So I'm, that's okay, but it's not quite where I want it. I'll just get clean up my palette and then speed dry the painting before I continue. The area that I'm most concerned with speed getting dry is this so that I can complete the path. You probably just saw me touching there, just making sure whether it was dry. It's drying off and it has. There's no tiny little bit of moisture there. Like you get a little bit of paint on your fingers. So just tells you exactly the state of the, uh, the paper and the paint, how wet it is, how dry it is. So let's do this first, um, cleaning the one inch flat brush. And I'm probably going to use some vertical brush strokes on this because it's water. And there'll be something being reflected, even if it's only the sky itself. So what is it? What do we need? It's cool. It's mostly a greeny gray, isn't it? So I think if we put a little bit of raw sienna, not too strong, not too dry. Remember, it was dry for the sparkle effect, but it doesn't need to be dry for this. It's quite wet, in fact. 
uh, put a little bit, little bit of that cerulean blue in the mix, only a small amount, making it slightly closer to a green again. Um, okay, so here goes. Um, now, you know, these are areas of the painting. These are things in the painting you think, well, I hope this goes okay. You can never rehearse areas where you have to go back and you just have to do it all the time. You have to do it lots and lots and lots to have the confidence. But what I'm going to do is, I, I think, if I move some vertical brush strokes around here, following the shape a little bit, okay, like this, over here. A vertical brush stroke like this always suggests there's some water there, you know, it's a, it's reflection, it's water, so therefore it will probably have a, a modicum at least of reflection in there. So I'm cleaning the brushes I'm speaking to you, um, same way as normal, thumb and uh, index finger, squeezing the fibers, just squeezing the fibers so it's mostly dry. And now I can make some slight adjustments. Again, vertical brush marks. That really softens what I've just applied like that. You can even get it across the sand a little bit like this, across the um, sand on the beach. Okay, here we are. Okay, right, let's finish this painting. I'm putting down for the first time, oh, sorry. <laughs> I. I've got to do that path, haven't I? So um, I've, I'll use the same uh, mix for a moment that I had there, but I fancy just a little bit of alizarin crimson in, in there. So there was that weak mix from what I just did on the water here. And I've taken corner of that brush and just put a little bit of um, uh, alizarin crimson in there. What, why did I do that? But only because I sort of want to make this look slightly different to the beach, okay? just slightly close to it, but not, not exactly the same. So a bit of paint on here. Um, there's all sorts of things going on down here, closer. Um, there are actually uh, boats um, just standing uh, down here. Um, and I'm not gonna put the boats in. Whatever you do, don't put the boats in because um, <laughs> I'm gonna infer them. I'm gonna say there's something there, but I don't want you to know what it is because I don't want you stopping down here. Um, so I'm, take, I'm picking up a little bit of burnt sienna and a bit of ultramarine blue. And while it's still wet, mostly wet, um, I'll just put some shapes in here like this. Following the, again, notice how the brush, the mark that I'm making is, well, that's what these boats are anyway. They're, they're sort of like little fish swimming up a river, aren't they? You know, that's the flow again, sense of flow going, going through. And that's really all you need to do. Um, do I, you know, there's masts there. That's why I went, that's probably why I didn't mention at the time I was doing these little vertical lines. Basically, there's a couple of masts on these boats. Um, and we could risk putting those in because, you know, there's, it's just a hint of something that's going on down here. But be careful because, you know, it's it, that's enough. You don't any more there, any more information than that. Right, uh, that was a rigger brush I just used for that. I'm now putting the rigger brush down and picking up my number six round brush with a really good point. Okay, really important that when you're getting to this stage in your painting, you want to be using a brush with a good point, uh, not one of these really old ancient brushes that has lost, long lost its point. Um, so ultramarine blue or cobalt, it's not really that important for this. Cobalt or ultramarine, bit of burnt sienna in here, okay, quite dry. There's a little bit of moisture in the puddle that I was using and I've mixed this right bang in the middle of a dried out puddle. So you must be aware yourselves, folks, of where the water is all the time. And what I mean by that is where the water is, literally, how much of it is on your mixing area, how much of it was already in your brush, if any, how much of it is still on the painting before. Once, so once you've got this part right, once you, once this two, it's a two part job. Once you've got this part of it right, the loading of the brush and getting this right, you've then got to consider how will that relate to what's on the paper already? If, you're, if you've got this area still swimming and it's damp, 
you will either have to wait or you have to sort of say, well, I've got to make this even drier, this mix in the brush, okay? Depending on what it is you, you, you're wanting to do, of course. So I want to put some little dots and to in, in, uh, indicate some, um, a busy sort of harbor here. And they are, these little boats literally are just, should I go put some cerulean blue in there actually, make them slightly lighter. Um, and as I say, you don't want to show off every little hull and cabin. These are just little hits. Needs a bit more water in it. A couple of these, as I move down the beach here, notice how these little shapes get slightly bigger, okay? Now they probably won't have, they're too small anyway, but I wouldn't start worrying about shadows on these little dots because the, remember the light is coming behind us. If they had a shadow, it'd be coming towards us. And the angle of um, view is too shallow anyway for us to see such uh, shadows. Little, so so we can, this, is where, this is fun time. This is the bit I really love because you know, um, th this is the icing on the cake. This is your reward for all the discipline you had to keep to do everything else. Little bit of detail. You, can, you could go back in over here a little bit. Be a bit careful over here on the jetty the, 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 where the life, uh, the lifeboat is because it's further away than the harbour, okay? Don't do too much. A little bit of information here. A little bit of broken structure at the end of that jetty should help. Something there. Say so there's the odd dot here, but don't move too far. I'm, I'm uh, falling into my own uh, trap um, of what I was saying earlier. Don't start looking to move out from here. All about this area here now. So something at the top of the jetty here because there's cranes and uh, lifts that they pull the boats up over the jetty. And I think really we're done, okay? Um, I usually can't resist a little bit of, um, can't resist a little bit of white gouache, the use of a bit of white gouache, just adds a bit of atmosphere. So take white gouache, Little bit of spatter. Do a little bit of spatter in the dark color if you want to, just picking up uh, things, you know, on the beach there. That's it. I think that's what we uh, Soften off some of this in places like this, showing the lay of the land. Let's put the mount around it and see what we've got. There we are, folks. I hope that you've enjoyed that. Hope you've uh, learned um, lots of things because you've got to be focused. Learning is about being focused and um, to nail each thing. Um, don't try to um, grab all the toys in the toy shop at once. It's, it's not, you can't do that. Just uh, take it bite-sized chunks. Okay, good luck, folks.